Are there any questions for Coach Goodwin? We can go ahead and start. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I, I guess, well, yeah, I guess you're in the room uh, for EJ's questions. You probably know where I'm going with this. But from a blocking standpoint, when you guys have – personnel that can mix and match at tight end and running back and you can line up 12 or 21. Yes. How does that give you guys an advantage from a blocking standpoint? Well, for us, we're just trying to find the best way to get some yardage, you know, blocking scheme wise, whether we're using a extra offensive lineman at the tight end position or using two of our tight ends or, you know, just using two backs, uh, you know, with Ick, not, excuse me, with Chuba and Miles, we're just trying to find the best matchup that we could have execution from a run game standpoint. And, uh, you know, we're just looking at the scheme that we could have that are, that's in our system that could fit, that we can get the blocking done and try to get yards. And then uh, the kind of trio of offensive line coaches separating everybody's position group. How, is, how has that been the first month uh, of kind of collaborating together, but also isolating positions and teaching in that way? Yeah, for me, it's something I started back in Indianapolis uh, when me and Joe Gilbert first started working together. You know, in my young days in the league, it was always like, you know, the assistant O-line coach sat back and the O-line coach kind of micromanaged everything. And I just felt like from that standpoint, a lot of guys were just standing around not getting work. So ever since I kind of became an offensive line coach where I had my own room, I like splitting it up. So everybody gets work, everybody's doing something, and you develop guys quicker that way. And I think it's starting to show up week in and week out. Thanks. Yes. All right, let's go to David Newton, followed by Darren Gant. Hey, Coach, great to see you today. Yes, sir. Uh, wanted to ask you, uh, when you guys were starting to put together this line um, during the offseason when you first got there, I know you were focused on the, the guards and that inside play. What are you most like, pleased with that you guys were able to figure out? And, and your, where's an example of where you're seeing that right now? Well, for me, it's, uh, you know, everything we know as far as football, I feel like the offensive line is the foundation of the team. So I think Mr. Tepper, I thank Dan for spending that money to get Rob and D. Lou. They've been a big help, and Austin's done a great job playing in the middle. And Icky's getting better, and Timo's doing a great job as an old vet over there on the right side of the offensive line. But the biggest thing for us is we're just trying to coach these guys up the best we can. I said at my last press conference I had with you guys, I believe we got guys that got, you know, a high chance to be Pro Bowl players if they play at a high level. Right now, I think guys are trying to strive to be that, and it's showing up on tape. And and the protection you got, I mean, you guys have been really amazing in the protection. Yes. Um, is, is there any one thing, there were one key that y'all kind of pulled it all together there? Uh, for us, it's just we work it every day, you know, individually from a pass pro standpoint as a group. Every day we're working on something from a protection standpoint. We have meetings with the quarterbacks, uh, with the running backs to make sure we're all on the same page. The biggest thing about protection is making sure everybody's on the same page and we're just trying not to turn anybody free and it's showing up on tape. Uh, Joe does a good, good job of just kind of breaking down how we're going to execute our protections. You know, when it comes to the run game, I'm the voice. When it comes to the protection, Joe's the voice. And I think everybody likes that because, you know, when there's a question, somebody goes to that person and that way we don't have any issues from a communication standpoint. Who has the attitude? That'd be all of us, but I'm a screamer. I'll just say that. I like to yell a lot. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, yes, sir. Hey, Harold, last week, uh, Chandler stepping in and being able to start and, and kind of keep things together. How do you guys handle when you know you're going to have a replacement yes. ahead of time? Uh, to me, next man up. That's always been the mentality I've been around since Mike Tomlin. That was always his big phrase, next man up. And uh, we know Chandler's sitting there. He's a draft pick of the organization that had belief in him. I came in and watched his tape as a rookie. I thought he was a decent player, and I think he has a high upside. So when, when somebody gets hurt inside, I have no problem sliding him in there. He practices hard, and uh, he studies, and he wants to be good. So that makes it easy for me to put him in the game. When you are planning over the course of like the off season, do you sort of work with the first eight, ten guys, knowing there's going to be some level of that? I mean, do you kind of teach it that way? We do. I think you know, if you're not a starter, you have to be able to do a lot of things. So we kind of just plan things that way. You know, obviously coming in our situation, you got D. Lou, you got Rob, you got Austin, you got Timo, and you got Icky. Those guys are going to be starters. So you just got to develop the other guys and make the, make sure they're ready. So when their number gets called, whether it's guard, tackle, or center, they're ready to go, and we don't skip a beat. Right, let's go to Mike K. Followed by Alex Zetwell. Hi there, me again. Yes. Um, so I, I guess uh, my next question is, you guys did spend a lot of money on the guards. Yes. But you also spent money on Yash. Uh, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. who who is probably one of the higher paid swing tackles in the league. I'm just curious to have that type of insurance on the line, especially with Brady as well, who has a lot of starting experience. How, how reassuring is that for you as a teacher, but also as a coach in game settings? It's very comforting uh, from the standpoint, at some point, at some given time throughout the season, somebody's going to go down, whether it's a week or two, knock on wood, not for the season. Uh, so just having Yash, having Brady, if he need to go play tackle, just makes us have a level of comfort. Uh, like I said, you just got to plan for the future. Just in case somebody gets hurt, I feel good about our backup tackle situation. And it's in this league, it's hard to find those guys. And we potentially have two in Brady and Yash because Brady can do a lot of things. It gives us comfort as coaches. Thanks. Hey, Harold. Um, so you, you first drive of the game, drive all the way down to the one, fourth yes. and one. The uh, it, it didn't work out after uh, hand the ball off to shoot, but Austin Corbett was uh, held his offensive line quite accountable after that. Yeah. Have you, have you been impressed, just generally speaking, have you been impressed by this group's accountability? What, what, what has stuck out to you um, in terms of that? For me, the first thing that stands out when you sit in that room and you're standing in front of the room is just the guys get along. They believe in each other. They fight for each other. They hold each other accountable. And, uh, you know, Austin's been a, doing a great job playing in the center position, also being a leader of the room. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, last week we didn't punch it in. If I was coach, I'd still go for work. We have to do a better job of coaching it and do a better job of blocking it because there's a couple plays coach called. I feel like the ball should have got in. We just got to block it better. But overall, as a group, those guys know we got to do better than that, and hopefully it never happens happens again um what was just curious what was uh watching that film like back in the room what were the guys saying what were you saying take me uh, in there it comes down to just technique and fundamentals right and uh, we know in those situations linebackers are going to be more aggressive the d line's usually going to be slanting and stunting and we got to make sure we're on our p's and q's as far as our technique being on the proper angle and make sure we secure the block because we know our backs are good enough to get in if we cover people up and we didn't do a good enough job thank you Let's go to Jeff Hawkins. Uh, morning, Coach. Good morning. Hey, um, yeah, I saw a stat where the offensive line uh, allowed the lowest pressure rate uh, last week. Yes. Um, and you did it with Zavalia in for Lewis. You yeah. know, I know you touched on it a little bit, but what does that speak for the overall depth of the offensive line going forward? That means I'm a happy coach. You know, like I said, at any certain time anybody ha- has to step in, they're going to be ready and they're going to be counted on. The standard doesn't drop. Uh, we have a high expectation where we're trying to take this team, changing this culture, and being a great offensive and a team unit. So uh, whoever goes in there has to, you know, step to the plate and, uh, you know, swing for us and make sure he does a good job of protecting the quarterback or blocking for the run game. But I was uh, happy with Chandler. He graded out pretty high. But none of those guys got a high grade on the, on the fourth and one or the third and one going in. Any more for Coach? All right, thanks, Coach Goodwin. Appreciate you guys.